When we talk about biology, uh, biology also plays another role in the carbon cycle. It's called uh, biological uh, or chemical weathering. Things like these, moss looking thing, mostly lichens, uh, grow on the ground, they grow on rocks and they set tiny little roots and what are the roots doing? Basically they are moving carbon dioxide that is used in photosynthesis along with the water back into the rock or uh, soil, whatever they are, right? So the water that's coming out of the roots is very acidic which is going to accelerate uh, the weathering. So there is biological weathering, it's also called chemical weathering and it is a part of the uh, life cycle. It is a part of the carbon cycle again on geologic time scales. Uh, this is how uh, soil gets produced over long time, time scales. Uh, roots can even grow into the cracks in the rocks and split open the rocks and every time you make uh, fractures in the rocks and carbonic acid can get in, H2CO3 can get in, there is more surface area and there is more weathering. So biology also has a role to play on in the weathering. So when we talk about biology, uh, carbon cycle seems uh, like the most important one, but even though CO2 plus H2O is the photosynthetic pathway, uh, just like us, they also need other nutrients. We've been talking about nitrate. We didn't say exactly not what nitrate is used for, but there are needs for osmotic regulation, uh, building solid materials, uh, and so on and so forth. So think about your own body with uh, enzymes, hormones, bones, uh, teeth, uh, skin, etc., etc., right? So it's not just carbon. Even though body is made up of carbon and water, uh, the elements of life are considered carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and oxygen, right? So phosphorus cycle, uh, the big, big difference is that there is no ph phosphorus in the atmosphere. There is lots of carbon in the atmosphere, there is lots of nitrogen in the atmosphere, but phosphorus mostly cycles through soil and ocean. Whatever little uh, phosphorus there is, is just being airborne or carried. It's not a, res atmosphere is not a reservoir of phosphorus, okay? Not a significant reservoir anyways. So what's happening then? There is phosphorus in the surface ocean. Phosphorus is predominantly being uh, generated by uh, weathering of s sedimentary rocks. So there is a massive reservoir of phosphorus in sedimentary rocks. 10 to the 20, uh, again, petagrams. Uh, uh, and weathering is producing a flux of 1 times 10 to the 11, okay, into the ocean. So weathering means r rain, water, into the ocean, right? Surface ocean. And in the deep ocean, you have more phosphorus, 3 times 10 to the 15, because there is recycling and accumulation and the fluxes come from biological pump and what is called the iron pump which is as a limi limiting nutrient it can increase photosynthesis and pump down more production. L remember geoengineering when we said we can go in a ship, ship and dump iron and increase photosynthesis, right? How does it happen in the real world? You have what is called wet deposition and dry deposition. So the soil, the dust Remember the Sahara dust plume we, we saw that goes all the way across the Atlantic into the Caribbean and North America? That dust carries a certain percentage of iron. That's called aeolian iron, airborne iron. Okay? Very tiny, tiny particles of iron can be dissolved in water and they become what is called bioavailable. So phytoplankton can take them up, which means phytoplankton also sink them. They, living things scavenge iron from the water and so on and so forth. So there is a flux of 5 times 10 to the 12 and the upwelling is going to bring that back for an equilibrium on some time scale. 
okay? But obviously this is being perturbed by uh, lots of phosphorus mining in some West African countries, uh, phosphates used in fertilizers. Remember we are changing the N2P ratios of runoff and f sediment loads and so on and so forth, okay? So phosphorus burial in sediments is uh, 1 10 to the 11, which is similar to the downwelling. So these numbers balance here. And the buried sediment obviously becomes sedimentary rock over time as it gets compressed and uh, litified, right? Metamorphized is when there is temperature and pressure and there is a change in uh, crystal structure, like limestone can go to a marble, for example, or just compressed into rocks as opposed to sediments, okay? So sedimentary rocks are formed that way, which gets exposed at some point by plate movements uh, and uh, surfacing of the rocks and that's weathering. So this is the main thing uh, to notice. So uh, phosphorus burial in sediments is going to re decrease, increase phosphorus burial in sediments is going to decrease the phosphorus content of the ocean to the extent that phosphorus is a critical nutrient for photosynthesis, okay? that's going to be a positive feedback. If you decrease fo uh, phosphorus in the wa uh, ocean, you are going to decrease biological productivity and pumping uh, to sediments, and that's going to decrease uh, phosphorus burial in sediments. So there is a stabilizing loop because positive, positive, negative, it's going to multiply them, multiply the couplings, and you're going to get a uh, net negative feedback, okay? So the, ne the next thing we will learn is that phosphorus actually turns out to be a, a very critical nutrient and the most important nutrient that limits uh, photosynthesis in the end. How does that work? That has to do some, uh, something to do with how nitrate or nutrients are made available, nitrogen nutrients are made available for photosynthesis. So nitrogen cycle then becomes very important, okay? So biology cannot be done just with carbon cycle. We must go through phosphorus and nitrogen cycles.